Hello guys, welcome to Code Runner YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to see today's skill rank daily challenge and daily test solution. I think this video is going to be very long time. So if you want only the solution, watch last one minute of the video. So first you are going to see today's daily challenge solution. So in today's daily challenge, the program must accept a hard integer n as a input. And the program must print a decided pattern. So and this is the important note given here. So if the pattern reaches the uh, end of the alphabet, that is z then a must be re repeated so why this node is given here because the boundary condition of n is range between 1 to 30 so we know the only 26 character alphabet so if the final character is z is encoded we need to again cycle through the first character of the alphabet that is a so and so this is our first test case so this is our n value and this is the pattern we need to print now we going to observe the pattern so what is the observation so this pattern is a in form of half diamond shape this pattern contains even columns are filled with numbers and then odd columns are filled with alphabets and this pattern repeats until the end these are the observations we made from this pattern so how we fill the odd columns with the numbers so this is the formula to print the number so the formula is the i minus j plus 1 so i is our row index and the j is our column index and the plus 1 is a number to create a number pattern start from 1 so for an example if i go into consider this row column index so the row and the column index for this position is 2 under 2 so if i minus 2 minus 2 i get 0 so if i get here 1 i go into plus add 1 here so the final result is 1 so and in even columns we need to fill it with the alphabet so how we get the alphabet so this is the formula used to get the alphabet position so that is i plus j modulus of 26 so here the modulus of 26 indicates if we reach the end of the alphabet we need to cycle towards the first letter of the alphabet that is a so i use the modulus of 26 here and this plus 91 represent the ascii value of alphabet a so then only we can get a correct al alphabet ascii value to convert from integer to character so if i going to consider this row column value so the index of this row is 3 and the column index of this position is 1 so if i apply this row value and column value in this formula i can get a value of character that is c so that's all about the expansion now we're going to see the coding part so this is the code i written here so this for loop is going to iterate for of each row and this for loop going to iterate for each column value so if j modulus of 2 equal to equal to 0 it indicates column is even so we are going to use this formula to print a integer value else the column is odd then we use going to use this formula to print a alphabet value and here I used a counter C and T. Why? Because so this pattern is of increasing and decreasing order. So this pattern increases until it reaches n minus 2. And after reaching n minus 2, the pattern start decreasing. So for that I used a counter variable. If whenever our i value is smaller than n, we need to increment our counter value. So if the i value is not less than n, we need to decrement our counter value. So under this counter value is used here to control column length. Now we are going to analyze the time complexity and space complexity of the code. So this code only takes a number of characters in a pattern to as a time complexity. And the space complexity of the code is O of 1 because I used a constant amount of space here. So that's all about today's daily challenge. Now we are going to see today's daily test solution. So this is our today's daily test question. So here the program must accept an integer n, n list of digits. And then 
the program must print the digit in the sum s up to integer n as the output. What this question say to us? The program must accept a n list of digit and we need to convert that each list, list to an integer and add all integer values. So a boundary condition of n is range from 2 to 100 and the number of digit in each list is range from 1 to 50. So we know the storing this much of 50 digit in an integer format is not possible. So we need to use data structure called array. This is our first test case. So this 3 represent our n list value. So this 3 represent our n value and this 3 lines represent our integer list. So in here I use the stack as a data structure to store the integer value. Here there are three lists. So we need three stack to store the each list. So first this value I going to add in first step. And this second value I going to add in second step. And this third value I going to add in third stack. So we are not. The stack is yeah, use the algorithm of last in first out. So this last element is going to be popped in the first and this first element is going to pop the last so after putting all the list of integer to the respective stacks then i going to calculate the sum of the digits so this is how we can sum the digits so first usually in the normal addition we first sum from the last of the digits so this stack contains each list digit last element in the first position so if I use the pop position in the first stack, I get 0 as a value. And then in the second stack, I get 2 as a value. And in the third stack, I get 5 as a value. So 0 plus 2 plus 5 is ours. It's going to give a sum of 7 as a value. And I also use the reminder variable here. Because in some cases, we also get, get a number of digit more than 1. So if, we, if the sum of digit is going to be 21, so we need to only store this one as one value to the result stack and this two is our reminder. So this two goes to reminder value. So but here in this last digit addition we get only get seven as a value. So we need to put the digit into the result stack and that sum value divided by 10 will give us a reminder. And also the sum of digit minus of 10 will give a last digit that is 7. So in next step the last digit are popped out from the stack. So ne next our last digit is 0, 0, 9. So if we sum 0 plus 0 plus 9 and the re remainder value also 0, we get 9 as our value. So 9 is our digit sum. So update the value of remainder is going to be 0 because 9 divided by 10 will result as 0 and 9 minus of 10 will result 9 so that 9 value is going to be append in the result stack and then so after popping those values then the last digit of the first stack is 5 and the second stack is 1 so this stack, uh, stack contains no digit no sum is added in this stack 3 so 5 plus 1 is 6 and the remainder 0 we get 6 as a value so this 6 is our digit sum value so our update remainder is going to be 0 only and the last digit is 6 only so that 6 is added into the result stack and in next step so the last element of the first stack is 2 and the last element of the first stack 2 is 8 so 2 plus 8 and this remainder value 0 we get 10 as our result so here it is a two digit number so in our usual addition we get use the last digit as a result value so that digit is going to be append in the result stack and this after remaining digit is 1 here so this value is going to be updated in the remainder value so our next step is this only so then we going to pop the last element in the stack 1 and then the last element in the stack 2. So 1 plus 6 is 7 and then we get the remainder value as 1 from the previous iteration. So 1, 6 
and 1 we get 7 as a result sorry 8 as a result so this 8 is our digit sum and the remainder of data value is 0 and the last digit is 8 so the 8 is appended to the result stack and after that so our first stack is, stack is empty so no element here but the second stack is as a element as 5 so 5 plus 0 result 5 only so the last digit of this sum is 5 so that is append in the result stack and the remainder is here 0 so after if the our remainder values contain any digit we need to also update that digit to the result stack but here the remainder value is 0 only so we did not consider to append the 0 to the result stack so after appending all the digits in the remainder value to the stack we need to print the stack value as a output so after printing a result stack value output we get this as a result so this result exactly match to our first test case result so this is the logic we are going to use for to solve today's daily test so now we are going to see the coding part so this is the code i written in java so first i, I get the n value as the input and then i use a list of stack to store each list into the respective stack and i use the max len value because we need to iterate until the all the stack becomes empty and i use the for loop to get a list one by one and I use another for loop to get a digit in each line and add the digit to the respective stack here. And parallelly I also get a maximum length of the list. So after that I created a result stack here to store our output and I also I created a reminder variable here to store our reminder of each digit sum i use this for loop to iterate stack of list one by one and i use the digit sum variable to get each digit sum of sum from the stack so we also need to consider a reminder value so the digit sum value initially is going to be m and after that i use the this for loop to get a stack element so if the stack is not empty we are going to get a top element from the stack. So and add that element to the digit sum. So after that we are going to we need to split the digit sum and the remainder. So digit sum minus of 10 we get the give as a result value to store in the result stack. And digit sum divided by 10 will give us a remainder value. So after this loop ends we get our result value and also a update a reminder value so if our reminder value contains any digit we need to also append those digit to our result stack and after appending the reminder value we are going to print the result stack value as a output so that's all about the code logic now we are going to see time complexity the time complexity is n star m this n represent the number of lists and this m represent the maximum length of the list and the space complexity is same also so why because i use the list of stack to store the input value that's why the space complexity of the program is n star m and i also need to mention that this test case has two space gap here so if you use simply input that split our code did not go into work because here it has a double space so what you need to use this you can get the input and iterate a character one by one and then check if the character is a digit then you going to append the digit to the stack so this is going to work so that's all about today's video thanks for watching